Hello there everybody, Peter of England bringing you a continuation video, um, as I said I was going to. Um, we are now going to deal with um, questions that have come in since the, the first video, which I put up as constitutional conundrums or constitutional conspiracy, um, when we were talking about free men, uh, sovereignty, and how to uh, free yourself, in effect, from the, the snares and the traps of the, the state. Uh, now, before I go on to this subject, there's a bit of housekeeping I want to take care of beforehand, uh, just by saying that this video and its content, uh, content as far as Google are concerned, um, and Alphabet Inc. and YouTube, uh, it is protected by Articles 18 and 19 of the Universal Declaration of Human Rights, which gives me the right to freedom of expression and ideas, no matter whether in a public forum or in a private forum. So there is no defense for the community guidelines to say that anything that I am um, stating here is an infringement because they cannot trump, if you'll pardon the, the pun there, they can't trump the Universal Declaration of Human Rights um, treaty agreements. The next thing is, for those people out there who are um, subscribers and people who are obviously watching the channel, I'd encourage you to listen and watch the videos a little bit more on the channel because I found out recently, not having posted for 30 months, that the terms and conditions for YouTube changed around a year ago. And so what's happening now, much to my surprise and chagrin or disappointment, is that um, ads are appearing on my videos, which I don't want to appear on my videos. And so what I want to do is um, I need to become a YouTube partner. And to do that, I am quite short on the number of viewed hours over the last 12 months. And the reason for that is I've posted nothing. So if I can become a YouTube partner, then I can have more control over the type of advertisements that they they annoyingly patch onto these videos. So what I'm asking people to do out there, um, if you're only watching the videos uh, that I've put there, and I think there are over 240 of them, put them on, don't switch them off. Just let them run in the background and we'll soon get to the designated, I think, 4,000 hour threshold that I need so that I can, I can have more control over the channel. Um, so that's the monetization aspect. The other thing that I'm just touching on now at the moment, because I'm just seeing the fact that these results are coming in from the midterm elections in the United States, and that the uh, much expected red wave has not taken place. Uh, and all I'm going to say out there is a summation of the entire mess that it is, is Fetterman. Fetterman and Dr. Oz. That sums up the debacle and the hypocrisy and the strangeness that the world of politics, especially in the United States, but no different in many other countries, has welded you into. Um, I've also got a video on this channel, which people should go and look, put in the search button, and never put an X or a cross on a ballot paper, because by doing so, it designates you as a particular type of individual, which is a citizen. And citizens, for example, in the United States, are nothing more than, than possessions of the, the state corporation of Washington, D.C., which is not to be confused with the actual physical Washington, D.C. So having said that and got these housekeeping um, uh, points in order, uh, the title of this video is Why Don't You Simply Drop Dead? Why I'm saying that is... The previous video, when we were dealing with constitutional situations and the, the, the point of how to become, uh, should we say, sovereign or free from the estate, uh, has brought many, many comments. Lots of emails have come through and people are asking for more clarification. So prior to the webinar, I'm trying to make a more simplistic uh, outline here of what you possibly need to do or need to start to do rather than putting papers together um, filing affidavits, making notices of claim of right, um, all the usual stuff that the free man movements have propagated over the, the last 10 or 15, uh, 15 years. So why I'm mentioning this one first, why don't you just drop dead? What I'm asking you to do is to start looking at ways of what's called jettisoning the straw man persona. So to jettison the straw man persona, um, there are many convoluted ways and suggestions of how to do it, but the main problem is that with the birth certification that when the informant, i.e. your mother, c 
created the birth certificate with the registrar of births and deaths and marriages, what was happening there is a trust was created. And what this trust does then, it endures for the entire so-called period of life of the individual until he, he dies and passes on. But the problem then is that the what's called a testamentary disposition of everything he owned is then handled by someone called an executor. But the trick here is to create a death before a physical death. So what you're doing is you're killing off the straw man identity while you're still alive. Now the problem mainly for people who try different routes to go here is you've got two or three major um, obstacles in front of you. If you go into a court and try and claim that you're a free man or a sovereign, what this is actually doing is it's reiterating to the judge or the judiciary or those who rule the estate, not the state, the estate or the trust estate, that you are actually in fact more of what they believe you to be than you actually realize. And that is incompetent or a child or a ward of court, someone who is not uh, competent to run his own financial affairs. So when you're going into the court, you want to say that you are there to, to prove your trustworthiness. That really means that you are capable and able to take control of your, your, um, your legal, sorry, not your legal estate, the beneficial title of your equitable interests. Okay. Now, a main problem is on this that typically uh, they're looking at you as a dead man. And as I mentioned in a previous video, what the first question that the, 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 the judge ever needs to ask the clerk of the court is, has this individual proved himself to be alive? Yes or no? And usually that question is never asked because nobody ever has answered it. And so we continue through the, the charade with the presumptions running in the background. So how you need to get out of this is just to remember that the, the prime criteria is for you to prove three things, really. One, that you're of sound mind. Secondly, that you are alive. And thirdly, that you have reached the age of majority. Now, for example, I'll talk about the Wills Act in the United Kingdom as an example. The Wills Act in the United Kingdom, Wills Act 1837, says that in order to create a, a, a will, three conditions must be satisfied. One, the individual must be the, over the age of majority, unless he's in, in an active war zone, when then I think they can be over the age of 16 and make a verbal testamentary disposition. Secondly, obviously, the individual must be alive or living, it can't be a corporation or a legal fiction. And thirdly, there must be proof that the individual has sound mind. So if you satisfy all those three criteria, then you have a will. And what happens then is the executor of your will is appointed and your estate is administered by the executor when you're dead. Okay, so look at it from this point of view. If you create a will now as a living man, you're in a position of declaring the straw man dead. So everything to do with, let's say, um, uh, local taxes or in the United Kingdom, um, council taxes, uh, duties of payment of taxes to the IRS, anything to do with the straw man personality where uh, all, the all capitals name is used then what you have is a situation where you're basically refuting the fact that that individual is, is, is alive, period. So what you're going to do then, I would suggest, you created your, your living will and you've made a piece of paper um, and, and you can get the, the copies of these papers from, from um, libraries or from um, uh, stationary um, departments. So you create the will, you appoint the executor. You can even appoint yourself as the executor, and this is a, a quite a, a good idea. So you might go from all capitals John Doe to John, John, uh, small, uh, small lettering John Doe, or you can put another name, a name of your choice. But the, the, main, the main thing that, that you are creating here is that the holder of the will yeah, once the straw man persona has died, uh, places the 
the court or the court entities in a, a sort of a paradox or a circular argument because usually they're only allowing you to handle the estate or the trust items when you've passed over to the other side. So what you're doing now is you're preempting that position by saying that the, 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 the personality's already died and you even acting as the executor. Now why it's important is that the executor of a will yeah, can only probate that will in chancery division. So this is an equitable remedy. So statutory, uh, statutory law doesn't have any effect or any interaction at all with chancery equity division. So you're only dealing with what's called a beneficial title, or, sorry, the beneficial interest, not the legal title. You don't want anything to do with the legal title. And one of the reasons you, 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 you don't is that if the state has created the liability, then it must be liable to pay out on that liability. So if the state is saying it controls the straw man or the straw man personality, that therefore it makes you apply for a passport, a driving license, a pilot's license, it makes you pay for everything that happens, then if it's, if it's created that, then there, therein lies the proof that you can actually hand that back to them because it's something in existence and they can't deny that. Okay, so what the, the automatic entitlement of an executor of a will is, it's an entitlement to what's called a special appearance in chancery. Okay, so it's a protective order that you're requesting from what's called the, the clerk of the court, and clerk stands for cleric, you're asking the clerk of the court for a special appearance in front of this judge because it's what's called a protective order is required. And a protective order is to do with business secrets, trademark infringements, or um, should we say uh, confidential information uh, for an in-camera, uh, a private meeting. And so once you've got that, then what you're going to be doing is asking the judge as to act as guardian to help you with the reclamation of the estate. And this is really what it's all boiling down to, that you are a ward of court, obviously in many cases um, classed as a minor, but the, the paradox is that once you are actually in that position of now showing that not only are you alive, you were of sound mind and now you want to reclaim your estate, the judge must start proceeding with the claim. Now what you've got to be able to do there is to prove, one, that there is um, an entitlement, there is an object within the trust, and that there is trust property and a trust has been created. And that is not so difficult to do because there are many headings that you can openly um, show to the judge. So he's really, in effect, just testing you to see whether you are, are um, shall we say, not so much worthy to proceed, but you have enough competency to proceed. Um, so in effect, what, what you're doing is you've proved yourself to be alive, and then you're also next, what's, what's probably called um, the petition for the emancipation of an infant. Yeah, and so this is 31 CFR um, again. And in effect, that's the, the, the key because the, the, the infant's account is held by a guardian. And so the, these two are linked and I'm, I'm pro progressing side by side. But as the estate hasn't been um, uh, reclaimed, then it stays in the custodianship of this guardian, which is in fact in an ecclesiastical arena because everything that's operating out there is an ecclesiastical uh, appointment. So for example, in the United Kingdom, um, if you are a notary, you, have to become, you, ha you need to be a lawyer, or in some cases you can be an independent notary, but in England and Wales, all notaries are appointed by the Archbishop of Canterbury, who resides at Lambeth Palace near to the houses of Westminster and Buckingham Palace. So it's very much a, an ecclesiastical charade. Um, and the, all the clerks of the court, whether they are the same, it's exactly the same in the United States and in Australia as it is in the United Kingdom, all the clerks of the court 
instruct the judges which courtroom they will be in and which case they will, will hear. Um, it's not the entitlement of the judge to say, well, I just want to listen, uh, I just want to deal with drug cases for the next three years or for the next three months. Um, they'll be moved from court to court depending on what the, 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 um, the plan is for the outcome of the verdict. And all of these, um, these uh, clerks are appointed by someone called the Clerk of the Court of the Crown in Chancery. And for those of you who might want to either research that or find it a doubtful proposition that the ministers are nothing but priesthood representatives administering their, their um, ministries, then go and have a look um, at who the actual um, clerk of the court of the crown in chancery is and what position and entitlement that is about. So that's the, the, the short video that I want to put together today. Jettison the the, the straw man persona or the personality. Also look at maybe Article 6 of the Universal Declaration of Human Rights, which also um, would tempt you to be recognized as a person, which under no way do you want. Um, and furthermore, I would just like to make you aware that we're going to hold a webinar on this within the next uh, two to three weeks. So please look at the links below. Go and have a look um, at freemanlegalservices.com on the website there. It will give you some guidelines as to how to register. Um, and that's under no obligation whatsoever, of course. Um, for those of you who like the work, uh, like and subscribe, please do not forget, if you can just go on to some of the videos on the channel um, or ask your friends to go on and watch something or send it to them, uh, instead of clicking it off after two minutes or five minutes, if that's the, the usual case, I don't know, just let it run. Um, because it's viewable hours on a public, uh, a publicly positioned video that is required to hit this 4,000 hour uh, target. Prior to one year ago, that was no problem. There were, there were thousands of hours in credit. But since the one year um, um, line that they drew for the, the qualification period, we need to get that uh, up and running so we can have more control of the, of the content. So uh, that's about it for now. Um, thank you very much. Peter of England signing off and saying the next video will be uh, along very, very soon. And it will be on the subject of the nuclear um, Armageddon that has come from nowhere and every media organization in the world seems to be talking about the possibility of it happening. Why would that be? So thanks for watching. Peter of England saying goodbye.